Hey, hey, Gator Nation. Welcome back to the Respect Our Decision pod of the people, guys. Of course, this is our show that we do. We try to do weekly. We don't always, but this is our show that we do where we answer the questions that you send to us on Facebook, sometimes on Twitter. Um, and we try to provide some answers, some context to what's going on, what we're hearing out there in the Florida sports world. And we got a few questions this week sent in to us. So me and Wes, you're going to try our best to answer them. As always, I'm your boy, Hirsch. With me, obviously, the hype man, Wes. It was a good getting ace. Guys, if you're checking us out on YouTube, you haven't seen this before, this is a show we do on the weekends. Please make sure you check out our main show, Respect Our Decision. We cover Gator recruiting, Gator football, Gator basketball, a little Gator baseball, a little bit of everything, man. We try to we try to really talk all about the Gator sports that are going on right now until we get football season, and then we're pretty much mainstream football then. But um, as always, guys, if you if you can, do us a big favor. Subscribe to the channel, guys. It helps us a great deal. Drop a like on the video, especially, man. It takes two seconds. It helps us tremendously. And leave a question below maybe for next week's show if you'd like us to answer something you like what you're hearing with this content and you want to hear more of it. Drop us a question below, and we'll answer it on next week's show. We don't have a whole lot of questions, man, but me and Wes, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, First one, we got our boy Justin Wood send us four questions. Justin always sends us the questions, man. He, every week, we drop the questionnaire on our Facebook page. Justin brings the heat. Uh, his first question, though, I'm going to go ahead and grab because it says, CJ's thoughts on the baseball season so far. <laughs> um, CJ couldn't be with us tonight for this. Justin, he's he's in the middle of trying to buy my house. Uh, big shout out to CJ's first time home buyer. A lot going on in his life. Just had a child. Um, but, Justin, if you watch the last – 15 to 20 minutes of the regular episode or you download it wherever you get your podcast from and listen to it. CJ does a large breakdown on what he thinks about where the baseball season is right now and where it's going to end up. Make sure you go and check that out, guys. CJ obviously is as passionate a Gator baseball fan as you'll ever meet. Whenever he talks about Gator baseball, he always brings the heat. He brings fair opinions. He breaks it down. He knows these players better than almost anyone I've ever seen outside of Nick Delatory. Big shout out say, to you, yeah. Nick. <laughs> um, just, I, I really, CJ knows his baseball stuff. Make sure y'all go check out that episode. Justin's next question. Wes, I'm going to start with you, man. What player are you most excited to see in spring practice? Andy Jean. Man, um, you took my damn answer. Hey, <laughs> my answer, man. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> because I want to see... Uh, he got a lot of hype, even over uh, Trey last year, uh, with three receivers coming in that we, we were all excited to see which one was going to be that guy. And it was a lot of Andy Gene hype coming in. And of course, he had some injuries uh, at, before he got here and uh, throughout the season as well. Uh, he played a little bit, uh, but I really want to see him because it's the excitement. I mean, we, we Jackson's there, and I love Jackson's hand. Uh, we got the uh, transfer from Wisconsin. I'm not going to pronounce it. I'm not going to say Shamir yeah, DK. I got you back. I got uh, you back. But, like, uh, the reason why I want to see him, because he's a young guy, and then you're looking forward to hopefully Napier having a successful season and DJ having, like, legit juniors. Well, one would be a junior in Trey. You have a red shirt freshman, well, red shirt sophomore at that point, Andy Jean, with some guys like, okay, we have a tough schedule next year, but yo, we got a five-star quarterback coming in year two in the program, and we got he got some dudes to get the ball to. So um, I want I wanted to see how uh, Andy Jean uh, shows up in in the spring. All right. Well, since you took my answer, um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna split two guys on defense. Uh, one a freshman, one a sophomore. The sophomore, Jakeem Jackson, look really forward to seeing how he's come uh, skill-wise and physically. Like last year, we've talked a lot about Jakeem came in. He That was a young man that was like 170 pounds. I I don't care what any depth chart had that kid listed at. If you looked at him, he was thin. But he has incredibly good coverage skills. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see him add 10 pounds of, of good muscle where, and I've mentioned this several times in our in our shows, where he can't get muscled by bigger receivers in the SEC upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. You saw that happen last year. I believe it was Leggett might have been who did it. I mean, just shimmied him off. And that's a bigger, stronger guy playing against a true freshman in the SEC. Yeah. Um, 
you've seen we've got changes to our strength and conditioning program, obviously, now. Um, I expect all of these guys that uh, – Aiden Mizell's of the world, the Jakeem Jackson's of the world, I expect – and and by all reports early, you can see it. These kids are 10 to 12 pounds bigger in muscle mass because of the weight weightlifting they're doing in the um, offseason program. I want to see how Jakeem Jackson plays – Add a little bit more weight, add a little bit more muscle. I think Jakeem Jackson has all the ability to be a true shutdown corner that Florida has come to know in their history. The other, Miles Graham. Yes, sir. I think Miles Graham's going to play some some minutes this this fall. Um, Aaron Childs might have some things to say about it when mm-hmm. he gets to campus, but that's why we're talking about spring. Miles is here. Miles is in the building. Miles is putting in reps. People that have seen Miles say Miles is already like a leader because that's the mentality that kid brings to the table. Obviously, his pedigree is well known from his dad, Ernest Graham. Obviously, Gator Great. The young man knows he knew walking in the building what he had to bring to the table. Into a position group where he knew I've got a chance to go in, stand next to Shamar James, and be an alpha dog on the defense. Uh, I'm going to learn from greats like Brandon Spikes, who's going to be there at practice. I mean, if you're – that's got to be a dream come true for a kid that grew up yeah. being a Gator fan and everything like that. You're on the sideline and Brandon Spikes is there yelling at you and telling you what you could be doing. And, you know, I think Miles Graham ha- is special. I think for more reasons than one, I think obviously he's a great athlete. And, and I mean, he played running back in high school, but he's going to play linebacker obviously at Florida, and he's going. I think he's going to be very good. But I think the mentality that he brings from his pedigree and his love for the Gators, I think, has the ability to make him a very special and passionate player. And that's something I think we can all admit has been missing from Florida, you know, football for a while is a passion like Miles Graham might bring to the table. All right. Justin's next question. Where do you have the (laughs) – I'm about to get Wes – where do you have the guys, the Gators basketball team, finishing in the tournament? Well, when you Justin, see this. <laughs> Justin, Justin, if you watched our main show and you've listened to it already, you've kind of already heard. Um, Wes has them in the final four. Wes is – the man lives the hype man gimmick all days of the week. I, I can't – I actually have them in the, in the Elite Eight. I, I, I buy into the hype that maybe they can, they can go on a little run here. Um, defense, baby, defense. If they can get by Colorado, man, you know, who knows? Like our, our man Ryan said that joined us on this week's episode, um, Colorado might provide more of a test than Marquette does, phys- you know, uh, talent-wise, because they yeah. have three NBA-ready basketball players on their squad. So, Wes has them in the Final Four. I have them in the, in the Elite Eight. CJ, um, he didn't tell us where he had them. I, that's yeah, kind of suspect. Yeah. I don't think he told us. I think he tried to keep it out. He probably had his bracket. His bracket should go, be in the thing. Yeah. We're gonna, have to go, we're gonna have to go sneak in on his bracket. <laughs> All right. Justin's last question. A little wrestling question, guys. We've kind of strayed away from the wrestling questions, but this is a quick, easy one. Wes, what is your favorite wrestling intro music of all time? I think we t- I don't know if we touched on it before, but uh, I don't remember us touching on the on the intro yeah. music. <laughs> I have to go with the with the couple. And it's just two. I'll just do two. And it's probably more if I had more time to think about it. But the first one would be um, Stone Cold, the, just the glass oh, breaking right. it. Yeah, that, 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 that's iconic. That's iconic, yeah. And, and even though I'm a rock fan, uh, it, it would be Stone Cold. And then just the way Road Dog did his intro, <laughs> you know I'm a DX fan as well. I kind of had like confusion going on when when Triple H and The Rock had their, their feud going on at that time during uh, my era. But uh, uh, the Ray Road Dog did that thing was it was only one guy that could do it the way he did it, and he did it over the mic while the music was playing. And I, and I everybody that. that was alive back then <laughs> do it wherever they went. You could yeah. walk in somebody, and somebody would yell that. And I was oh, about you to say, didn't know? <laughs> yeah. I, and I was about to say we were going to cover that. My if my favorite intro music is all the time, I was going to say twenty two year old me was going to say DX. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> DX intro and maybe the NWO right then both were just yeah, so yeah, iconic yeah. at that time. Like either one, because they were both the elite super groups and they stand yeah. up over the test of time. Adult me, 
um, Metalingus Edge's intro music is mm. is the one. Like that music hits, and I'm I'm hyped, man. When that yeah. you think you know me hits, and that damn guitar starts hammering, <laughs> yeah, and man. I get hyped up, man. I, that's that's my favorite because that's a song I actually have in my on my on my phone to this day that I will in my rotation. All right. Gary Taff asked, and and this kind of goes to a question you've already answered, Wes, but I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you talk about it some more. Maybe you can go a little more in depth. Gary Taft asked, how will Andy Jean be this year? Oh, um, I'm hopefully if he's healthy, I see Andy Jean getting a lot. Uh we give uh Billy a lot of flack uh as far as maybe recruiting wise, but guys love that, that were here, we think about the, the swings and the Hammonds and those guys. Uh, they were thought of as outside receivers, and he moved them in the slot, and they did well. Um, and uh, as far as Tyree Cleveland, we thought that maybe he was a borderline five star guy, and he had kind of success here. Uh, I think Andy Gene is going to have a solid season. I think he's going to live up to what we thought he could have been last year. Uh, it, he's going to have to earn it, though, because we have the guy from Wisconsin, like I said. Uh, we have Jackson come back, and we know Trey is going to be Trey. So if I, I think he's going to earn it, though. I, I think he's going to be a dude for us maybe five touchdowns, four touchdowns maybe. Hopefully he can get to six, 700 yards. And and Aiden Mizell is going to come to play, too, I got a feeling. Yeah. But I think you're going to see them, them in different places. Like, I, yeah. I think, you know, obviously Andy Jean – I think Andy Jean can be Ricky Purcell. I, I really do. He's an elite route runner, strong as he can be, really strong hands. Um, now, you got to prove you can be, obviously, as good as Ricky Purcell. Ricky Purcell, obviously, shooting up draft charts right now. Um, I think you're going to see – I don't think we've seen the final form of, of Ricky Purcell. I think that kid's got a lot, a lot of really good football ahead of him. Um but Andy Jean, man, uh, obviously um, Zach was on the show with us last week and talked about Andy Jean. Andy Jean's a kid that's just – he's built to be a wide receiver. He absolutely has the, mm-hmm. the frame route for it. Running. He, yeah. Route running, uh, elite hands. Everyone that's ever seen him has said this. Like, obviously last year there were some questions because he got his knee hurt. And I think the t- I think they reached a point where they were like, you know what? Let's not burn him. You know, let's, let's wonder, let him get healthy. I wonder when Billy was here with Dan Mullen, this is something that Clemson used to do. We would rotate our receivers every series. It would be a different three every series. Uh, uh, you would see Frank, Freddie Swain in the slot the first series, then Josh Hammond in the slot. You would see Jacob Copeland and uh, uh, yeah, uh, I know what you're talking about. Grimes, and then the next time you would see – uh, a different uh, shorter and somebody else on the outside uh, and Tyree Cleveland. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if we, I keep saying Tyree Cleveland. It wasn't Tyree Cleveland. It was, um, it was, it was, it was Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah. So I wonder if maybe we get back into that. Maybe even if it's not three, cause we had six good receivers so we could do that. Uh, I, even if it's one or two, every other series, I would don't take, I, wouldn't mind. I mean, if you've got the yeah. talent, rotate those guys out. As yeah. long as Trey Wilson's on the field more than he was last year. Yeah. I think I think that's the one thing nobody's arguing about. Or if they're they're all producing, leave them on the field. Like I mean, exactly. yeah. stay with a hot hand. All right, Ryan Parker. Which player on the team do you think is the best draft eligible prospect? Like as far as period, like of, for, of for coming next, out next for year. Next, next year. Let me let me go through. Obviously, Shamar comes to mind. They're probably um, Cam Jackson. Cam Jackson comes to mind. Uh, there's a lot of guys technically. I, Jason Marshall could be, but you got to have a huge season. I mean, Jason, Jason Marshall, Hassel, I think, yeah. has the talent. I Cam think is already, the- yeah. Cam and maybe even depending on what about Montrell? Austin, or even, uh, you know how the league, like, any offensive lineman, maybe Austin Barber comes up and, and has a first team SEC year I mean, at. Or Dixon can, you know, you got the kid from San Diego State, and he obviously, yeah. um, uh, Joey Slackman, I mean, that just transferred in. Obviously, he, you know, he was from the Ivy League yeah, and was yeah. defensive player of the year. Um, Asa Turner, that just, I don't think Asa Turner has a really high ceiling, though. I yeah. think if you're talking about 
the best draft eligible prospect as far as a guy that between now and next year's draft could really shoot up? I think it has to be Shamar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Shamar, if Shamar went out and just had the season where he puts it all together, it's his third year. Um, the defense is playing at a level where we haven't seen where guys are doing their jobs, where he's not having to overcompensate for guys not doing their jobs. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, you had some guys last year that he was having to really work his ass off. Let's just say what it is <laughs> because, yeah. you know, Hey, maybe the defensive line stopped some guys up front and he's not having to, you know, chase guys down and, and, you know that you get winded as a linebacker when other guys are not <laughs> not doing their thing, yeah. and and your body breaks down. And I, you know, hey, here we are. But Shamar James has the talent without a yeah. shadow of a doubt. Um, who's to say Justice Boone doesn't go out and have some incredible forgot, year? Yo, I slipped on my sleep to my boy. Good, 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 good name. I mean, but there are a lot of yeah. guys that could, and there's a lot of hypotheticals. It's fun to play the hypothetical card in spring. Let's just but say we have more of, guys. There's a ready. lot of, but but the the term draft eligible, you have to realize it's just a third year guy. Yeah. Um. I think out of all of them, I think if he put it together mentally, I think Jason Marshall's the best on that list. Yeah, I really do. I just think Jason Marshall has been the the product of some rather suspect coaching. I'm sorry. I'm I know Corey Raymond is 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 an all time great. But even yeah. even our uh, unavailable guy, huh? Oh, uh, Devin Moore, yes. Yeah. <laughs> because Devin is look when he's on the field, 